Hello and welcome. It was Chinese General Sun Zi who said, Know your enemy and know yourself. In modern warfare, knowing your enemy can involve espionage, photo reconnaissance and capture and testing of enemy weapons. We have done a story on photo reconnaissance before and during World War II. Also a story on tempting enemy pilots to steal an aircraft and defect. Just as North Korean pilot No Kum Sok did during the Korean War. During World War II, the British managed to test many captured German aircraft and test for strengths and weaknesses. In an interview, the legendary Captain Eric Brown spoke about this. He went on to hold the world record for testing planes, flying 487 different types, often in dangerous conditions. For example, an airplane, German airplane, would crash in the United Kingdom. If it wasn't too badly damaged, we'd put it together and I would fly it. Be able to tell the boys in our fighter squadrons what to expect when they come up against it. What many wouldn't realise, though, is that the Germans during World War II had access to many captured and crashed British and American aircraft. Often the captured Allied aircraft were flown and evaluated by the Zirkus Rosarius, a Luftwaffe unit tasked with testing captured British and American aircraft, all of which were repainted in German markings to discover any strengths or vulnerabilities in their design or performance. This information was very useful in enabling German pilots to develop tactics designed to counter strengths and exploit any vulnerabilities. Their inventory in 1944 listed seven Spitfires of various marks. The unit was formed by Theodore Rosarius in 1943 and was part of the second squadron of the experimental unit of the Luftwaffe High Command. The Zirkus also toured operational airfields on all fronts, showing Luftwaffe pilots the captured aircraft and training them in techniques to counter these aircraft. Many Allied fighters were flown by the famous KG-200, their secret ops unit, that were known to have several Spitfires that they had captured or repaired after crashing along with the dozens of Allied fighters and bombers. The Germans used them for flight testing and clandestine missions behind enemy lines, particularly where long-range heavy bombers were needed. Those captured American bombers and fighters were used until the last days of the war. Spitfires were flown against the BF-109 and FW-190 aircraft to compare performance. Spitfires were also tested by German aircraft producers, especially by the Messerschmitt Company and by Daimler-Benz Aero Engines. By replacing the Spitfire's Merlin engine with a fuel-injected Daimler-Benz DB601 engine, the ultimate fighter plane was produced. This Mesher Spit would outperform anything else in the sky. The Spitfire's front fuselage was replaced by a Messerschmitt 109. Thank goodness the Nazis didn't have the rigs to build Spitfires. Captured Spitfires also featured in Nazi propaganda films. One was shown being supposedly attacked by VF-109 or FW-190 fighters in October 1940. Other Allied aircraft that fell into Nazi hands were the P-47B Republic Thunderbolt, P-38F Lockheed Lightning, P-51B North American Mustang, P-17F Flying Fortress, B-24 Consolidated Liberator, Hawker Hurricane, Hawker Typhoon, Vought F-4U Corsair, B-26 Martin Marauder and de Havilland Mosquito. Lots of them weren't there. The capture of military assets by the enemy is a threat that exists even today. I'm sure Western nations about to give military aid to the Ukraine take this into account whether the rockets, tanks and drones may fall into Russian hands. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe 
and hit the notify bell if you like what you see to promote new content.